Okay, in today's lesson, we'll be graphing inverse trig functions. And in the last video with evaluating inverse trig functions, I already talked about these graphs a little bit. So just a quick review. If you think about the unit circle, inverse sine has some restrictions where we're only using quarter uh, quadrant one and quadrant four. And the graph of the parent function, so that's inverse sine of x, is so the domain is from negative one to one, and then we're going from negative pi over two to pi over two. And then the points, we've got here, here, and here, and don't think of it as a straight line. Imagine if it, this is like a, the curve, but then it stops, so it doesn't keep going. It just stops here, getting those three. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just translate that curve. <clears throat> so on the graph, I'm gonna redraw what I just did. So I've got zero, zero, over one, pi over two, negative one, negative pi over two. So now let's graph y equals inverse sine of x minus 2. So we have been translating functions all year long. So you could probably guess, oh, this is just going to shift right two units. So if I just take all those points and shift them right, and then draw the same curve, there it is. Okay, similar, but now inverse cosine. If you remember in the last video, got the unit circle, and inverse cosine has these restrictions where we're going from zero to pi. So the graph, similar, we've got the domain is from negative one to one, but we're going, so we've got pi over two and we're going up to pi. So the parent function, uh, inverse cosine of x, has these points. So at negative one, that's where the pi is. The zero is at pi over two, and at one, it's a zero. And same thing, it's this curve. So if I'm gonna graph that parent function over here. So now let's translate it. Y equals inverse cosine of x, but now I have minus 2, not in parentheses, so it's exactly what you think. Everything's going to shift down 2. Now, this is a little tricky. It's not just shifting down two boxes, because the boxes, these units, are not counting by integers. They're counting by radians. So down 2, well, let's think about this. Well, pi is, so that's negative 3.14. And then negative pi over 2 is negative 1.57, about. So negative 2, we can just estimate. It's going to be somewhere in between. Um, at 3 pi over 4, which would be right here, is that it would be negative 2.35. So it's just, if you're going to shift it down 2, well, 2 is about here. So this one is shifting about one, two, almost like, let's just say two and a half um, units on here. We're just kind of estimating. And there you have inverse cosine shifted down two. Okay, now the last one, tangent, uh, similar to the sine function. Its restrictions keeps us here, quadrants one and four. And if we graph the parent function, inverse tan of x, so this at pi over two and negative pi over two, that's where they have horizontal asymptotes. And then the domain is all real numbers, because it does this. So if I graph that on here, let's put the asymptotes in. Uh, 
So I've got zero here, and then at pi over four is where we have the one and the negative one. So what happens if I, let's do inverse tan, but now let's do, I have a coefficient with that x. What it's gonna do is we're not shifting those asymptotes at all. So we're actually gonna be very close to the same graph. It really just kind of does this a little bit. Just changes the shape of it slightly. So there you have it, just a quick video graphing inverse trig functions. Good luck.